We're balling. Good. Okay. So today we're kind of do like it, uh, some odds and end things involving index of refraction and that sort of thing. So let's say that I gave you a mirror, okay, and you don't know what type of mirror it is, whether it's concave or convex. Oh. So what could you do to determine if it's concave or convex? Touch it. Mia. Not you're not allowed to touch it. Uh, put it up close to your face and slowly bring it away. Okay. And see if it if the image flips. Okay. Or not. So take that one. I have short arms. I don't know if this will work. Oh yeah. geez, don't take out the camera, okay. Mia. It stays normal. So is is oh. the image always upright? It's always upright. Yeah. It's always upright. It's so which mirror always produces? That virtual, virtual, upright image. The convex. 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 Okay. So, why could we never project that image onto a screen? Huh? Yeah. So when when and whenever you have a whenever you have a mirror. Okay, the easiest ray to always draw is start with that one where it's symmetrical, like here's your candle. So that goes like up three squares, come down three squares, you're here, okay? And draw that one so that it goes to the middle and draw that one where it matches that, okay? And so if it's a convex mirror, so the beauty of this is that right away, I know when, when, when you get this first ray drawn on any mirror, whether it's concave or convex, one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to be somewhere up here on a virtual image, or it's going to be somewhere down here and, and be an inverted real image. Okay, those are it. That's it. Once you get this drawn, it has to be up here or it has to be down here. That's it. So if you look at what Mia did, okay, Mia took it, she held it up, right, and she moved it away, and it never flipped over, right? So that image never changed. Was, was, hold that back up, Mia. So was your image upright or inverted? Upright. Okay. So what that means is that this image up here is going to be an upright image that's going to be virtual. I can't project it on the screen. The only way that can happen is with a convex lens. Now, so if, but if, to verify that, so now I'm going to give this one to Tate, right? So Tate, I want you to do the same thing. Okay. So what do you what do you get when you do that? My face is really big, and then it flips over. Okay. And there's a blurry point in between, right? Yeah. Okay. So on a concave mirror, you can get two images. Okay. You can get one where it's a virtual image over here, or you can get one where it's a real image over there. Okay. Again, start with that one. It's going to go doink, doink. It's either going to be up here or it's going to be somewhere over there. So as soon as you know that you can have two possible images, that's going to be a concave mirror. Now, let's talk lenses. So here I've got a lens, okay? So if I hold it up, right, move it away, no matter what I do to it, I only get upright images, okay? All right, so I'm looking at this, nothing ever, no matter what I do with it, it never goes blurry. So with this one though, if I hold it upright, okay, kind of goes blurry, okay, so I really can't focus it. Then if I go far enough away, then you all become really, really small. And upside down. And you're upside down. Okay? So with this one, you all are really, really small and you're upside down. But if I bring it in close enough, you almost kind of flip over, right? But I guess can't quite get there. Okay, so which one of these? So this one, hold it out far enough, y'all are upside down, okay, and small. I cross over, there was a blurry point, and then you kind of begin to focus in upright. So is this a concave or a convex lens? Convex. Convex, why? You're right, but why are you right? Convex lens. Okay, and that's right. So with this one, which is this concave mirror, so with this one, right, this is the one that when that light comes through, so on a concave mirror, 
see the concave lens, okay? So when that, when, when that light is coming from all of you, it's hitting here, right? And it's bouncing off. So because that light is bouncing off, it's not being focused. So when my eye is over here, my, eye, my little eye, over here on that side of the lens, okay? So when I'm looking at that, since that light coming through is only being spread out, it's not ever converging. So there's nothing I can, there's no point where that, where that image can flip over because of the fact that it's not being converged. Whereas if you have a convex lens, okay, remember that convex lens is going to be like this, right? And this is how your eyeball works. So the classic one with that, it hits, it goes through here, it hits, it goes through here, and then you get that inverted image over here, and that's what's happening when I go far enough away, you all look upside down. So those are the two tests that you can do to, on mirrors. So but they're like opposites of each other. So if you have a concave lens, you can only produce one type of image. But if you have a convex mirror, you can only produce one type of image. Okay? So though that's kind of what you need to begin to keep straight in your mind. Okay, cool with this. All right. Now, let me kind of shut out the slides. Let's see what we're doing here to see. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> okay. So if I take this light, okay, and Shine it. Oh, come on, turn it out. So I might have to turn it off. I'm afraid my laser is done. Wow, look, it's glowing in that dark. Can you see it? There we go. Oh, I love, oh, I wow. love those things. So what's happening is that I'm having internal reflection, okay? So that light is, what's happening is it's hitting this and it's staying within this, coiling around. And so this is how fiber optics work, okay? Awesome. So you send a signal in and instead of going through, it's going to reflect within this. So now, that's, that's one minute to show this. Fish tank. So, I need somebody to turn that light on in just a second. Turn it on for now and then turn it off in just a second. Because I need to get this set up. So I'd like to do this like over the sink. So first off, uh, yeah, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if it goes. So right, right here, so if I, I've got the lid on the bottom. So let's, let's, let's venture back into uh, fluids. So if I loosen up the lid, then the water comes out. If I tighten the lid, water stops. Loosen it. Boop. So what happens? Because it's just no the vacuum, there's no air. The that pressure is keeping it in to replace the air that's. Yeah, so, so when I close that down. The okay, air pressure is coming in the top. Yeah, so you were creating like negative pressure on the top because that air couldn't go in to replace it. Basically, I've created a seal. So what I'm going to try and do here. As soon as I can find out, whatever. Oh no. Oh, okay. So here's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and shine the laser through the bottle and have it hit the water that's going out the other side. Okay? It's going to be tough to do, but let me try it. Okay? So. Okay. So go ahead and shut up the light. Whoa. Okay? So what's happening is that light, as it hits that laser, as that laser hits that beam of water, okay? Go ahead and turn the back on. As that, as that, Laser hit that beam of light that's curling down like this. 
Notice that you couldn't see the laser until it began to bend. Because once it began to bend, then it got reflected within the water, and then it showed up. Got that idea. Okay, now, right back here. Go on, okay. Nope, out. Oh, it's sodium in that. That's the Exactly. Should have used that for the waves, sound waves. A trough. Okay. <laughs> Serial trough. Does anybody turn, turn lights out? Ben. Run, Ben. ben. Go fast. Run. Disappear. Oh, hey, this is the momentum. I'm in your track. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, Whoa. Yes, Whoa. Whoa. Okay. So. Well, it's all sparkly. I take this light. It's pretty. So, it's kind of cool because you can clearly see that when it hits that layer of water, that it deflects downward. So, why does it bend down towards? being refracted. Yeah, it's been refracted, right? So it's going slow, right? It hits that water and then it bounces down. Now if I take this, oh, I'm going to get this back over here so I can get the edge. Whoa, stop moving. Okay. Now, All right, we're ready for the next set of pictures <laughs> for groups. News Magazine, first and second semester. Hold on. K Club, Aviation Club, and SAFE. That's Whoa. News Mag, first semester. K, Aviation, That's what I SAFE. Is that, is, that similar, so cool. is that similar to how the fish tank out there yes. works? Okay. I mean, so, water. here's what we've got. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Here's so, the helpful water and glass. You'll notice that there's an angle, right, where that light travels parallel, and you can see it over there on the wall, <gasps> okay? Gasp. If I hit that just right. Oh, come on, I had it. Are you yeah. trying to get both lights on the wall? Yeah. There we go. Whoa! Okay. Is this double slit? It's oh, magic. No. Kinda. Okay, but here's the point. So you can see this light and it's going to hit this, and then it's going to go parallel with that surface. But if I go steeper... Oh, I can see it bent. Wow, that's crazy. Okay? So if I go steeper, here's what's important. You'll notice that it hits, and then it all reflects back in. So this is what's known as total, total internal refraction. So all of that light is hitting that surface, and it's bending in here. So the cool thing about this is you can also see that the angles are symmetrical. So this thing is almost acting like a mirror, okay? So it's hitting this, it's coming back down, and it's, and it's bouncing. Now, but if I try and do it from the other way, right? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I can't get this to completely bounce off, going from like a low index of refraction to a high index of refraction. I can't get all of that to reflect within this. But if I go from a try and go from a high index of refraction into air, then I can make that thing completely refract and come down like this, okay? Got that. So you can get, you can get internal refraction if you're going from a high optically dense material into a low optically dense material, but you can't get it to go the other way, okay? Mm -hmm. Got that, good? All right, back we go. Back to the table.
Okay. All right. So let's do let's do, do a little math. A little math. A little math. Um, Mr. Burkamp. Well, Mr. Burkamp, the board's not on. Um, yeah. We should have told him. How long? One of these days we'll do that. We'll do that at the end of the semester. We'll just yeah. let him go. <laughs> see how that goes. No. Maybe not on camera though. Don't want to make. Don't want to make this a uh, weird channel. <laughs> what? <laughs> not that it isn't already. Okay. So let's do this. So let's say that I'm going to try, try and shine that laser from air into water. So if this angle is 40 degrees here, then, what to, then what's going to be this angle here? First off, is it going to be more or less than 40 degrees? Should be less. Less, right? Because if you go in one, sine theta one equals in two, sine theta two, sine theta two right? So if we try and find this angle here, so I'd have N1 divided by N2, then take the inverse sine of all of that, okay, then you would get 1.00 times the sine of 40, somebody do this because I'm just completely making up the problem, divided by 1.33 and then the inverse sine of all of that, what do you get? 28.9. 28.9 degrees. Okay. Now, if this had been like one and a half, if this had been more optically dense, what would happen? Smaller angle. No, it would have been more and more and more. Okay. Right? Now, that's if I'm going from air from into water. Okay. Now, let's reverse it. Now I'm going to have that laser underneath the water. And I'm going to shine it up this way, and then I'm going to have it go into the air. So when it goes from the water into the air, so it's going to go like this, which way is it going to bend? It's going to bend towards horizontal, or it's going to bend towards vertical. So as this comes out, which way is it going to bend? Towards the horizontal. Towards the horizontal, because like this side is going to speed up first, right? Mm -hmm. So. Let's do this. Let's go, let's say that this is 40 degrees, okay? So we're going to have 1.33 times the sine of 40 degrees is going to equal 1.00 times the sine of theta. So somebody take 1.33 times the sine of 40 and then take the inverse sine of that. 58.7. What'd you get? 58.7. 58.7 degrees, okay? So that kind of matches up with what Tate said, okay? All right, we got 58.7 degrees. We're gonna bend down flatter because if you visualize it going like this, this side's gonna hit, it's gonna speed up, it's gonna tilt over, it's gonna go more like that, okay? Good with that. So if you, so does that mean if we in, increase the index of refraction to a certain point, then it comes all the way back down again? Now, let's try 50 degrees. So let's say we bump this thing up to 50 degrees, okay? So let's try 1.33 times the sine of 50 divided by 1 and then take the inverse sine of that. Oh, I got a domain it error. Oh, it doesn't work. Why? Because it's more than 1 when you multiply by 1.33. Oh, because it's more than 1, <coughs> okay? So if I go too steep, right? then it doesn't work because if you take this if you take the sign of 90 what do you get one. 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 one one okay sign of 90 is one so if this goes too steep then that's what i'm telling you is is there's a point where this is going to come in here and it's going to be at a 90 degree angle and that's what i was showing you then it's going to travel parallel with that surface and that's what i was able to do when I was able to get that, that light to show up back there on the back wall. So, to find, so how could you find that critical angle? Because obviously, it's got, so 50 is too big, mm -hmm. right? 
So it's somewhere between 40 and 50 degrees. So it equal to 1. 48.8. Use 1. 48.8. How'd you get it? So set equal to 1 and do algebra. Wow. <laughs> set, set 1 equal to 1. What you're solving for equal to 1. Okay. Oddly enough. You're just, yeah. Oddly enough. Mm -hmm. So let's try this little deal. Let's see if this works. So critical angle is the inverse sine of n divided by n naught. So now n naught is where you're going to originate, right? So in this situation, that's going to be 1.33. So somebody take the inverse sine of 1 divided by 3, 3 1.33. You should get 48.8 48 .8 degrees. Now, here's where this plays out. If you reverse this, okay, and you take 1.33 divided by 1, okay, so somebody try and take the inverse sine of 1.33 divided by 1. It won't work. It won't work because it won't it's greater than 1. Okay. Yeah, because of the fact that now you're going to have a domain error. That's not going to work. So what this is going to tell you is that if I'm at 48.8 degrees, and, and, if you, if, and here's what you can do. If you go back to this law, so if I take 1.33 times the sine of 48.8 degrees, that should equal 1.00 times the sine of what? 90. 50. 90 degrees. Okay. Because that's the only way it's going to work. So what this critical angle is going to tell you, number one, it's only going to work if you're going from a more optically dense medium into a less optically dense medium. Okay, That's the only way this thing will ever work. Because if you try, this is why when I was going from air into water, I could never make that happen because of the fact that I was never going to hit that point of internal reflection. But if I'm going from water, if I was shining it up through the water and trying to go out into the air, then I could make that where I get the 90 degree angle and it's going to go run parallel with that. Okay? That's cool. Got it? Good? Okay. So, let's go out to the fish tank for a second. Ah, uh, finally. Mia, stop playing with the zoom. Mia, you're going to give them motion sickness. They're already going to get motion sick. Walk so close. <laughs> so, Ryan. They're all like, no, it's bird camp again. <laughs> okay. So, as this comes in, okay, and we're going to see it here. So, if I draw a line from here, and it goes straight down, it's going to hit about right here, right? Yeah. So it hits here because of the fact that okay. So it's going to hit here and it's going to come back down. So because I'm going from a less optically dense medium to do more, is there any way that that thing is going to hit and it's going to bounce off off that ceiling? Nope. No. Nope. No. But if I do this, okay, hopefully. 
No, the fish in the lake. Stay <laughs> silly. <laughs> Get out of the lake. <laughs> We're trying to do so, physics. It's a fish oh. Okay. So now. Right about oh, now, how am I getting wait, that dot? Oh, it's being it's Directly coming up like this, me. but it's getting bent like that. Okay, so that's cool. Oh, because it's going. Hold on, it's green. I gotta get this chair. So it just I can see both. It's trying to get the parallel thing. Yeah, but if I get it right, it's also good. There it is. It's going back. Where? There's the only way that I can have two images. And it's being. Well, some of that bite's hitting here, right? And, but if you look, it's actually back behind this point. So some of that bite is hitting, and it's being reflected back that way. But some of that bite is also going through. And that's how it's showing up over there. Is that just reflection? What are you all up? Oh, Lord. Okay, go ahead and go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, is the one behind you reflecting on the glass? Yeah, so, so that is, that one back there is because it's hitting that black, or hitting this mirror, it's almost acting like, or hitting this glass, it's almost like acting like a mirror that's being reflected up there. Is it up right or in gray? Oh. It's a dot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a plain mirror, so. All right. So, but if, here's the point, if I try and go this way, then all that light is just going to get bent down. So one of the things that you're going to have a problem, like on today's assignment, whereas imagine that I'm going to come in here and I'm going to hold this pretty parallel to the surface. Okay, This is going to be one of your problems. And so when it's, what you can do is assume that basically, oh, uh, it works better if that surface is going to start. But what you can do is basically work backwards and say, okay, if this is, this is so hard. Okay, there, there it goes. Okay. So I'm basically holding it parallel with it. It's coming down and it's hitting this. So you're going to have a problem like this on your assignment. So imagine instead that you work backwards, that you start here and it's going to come up here and then it's going to hit that critical angle and it's going to go parallel with it. So you're going to have a problem today on your assignments and say, okay, hey, you're shining the flashlight parallel with it. It's going to, you have to tilt it down a little bit. Okay, you have to have a little bit of an angle of incident or otherwise it's just going to go parallel with it. But what you can do is model it where it's going to hit that light, reflect back down, and then you can work backwards and say, okay, let's hit that critical angle and then where you go back at a 90 degrees. Okay, forward. Yeah, you either love it or you hate objects. Right now, I'm not liking it because I don't understand any of it. I'm trying to make it. It's such a difficult mind. It's such a difficult mind. I don't believe they sang the name. Uh, 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 I don't like sitting over there. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm cameraman. <laughs> Good. Where does this thing go? Check the other side. All right, go. Yeah. <laughs> it's the other way. No. It's one of them. Yeah. That helps.
Where does the camera cord go on this? Just on that side. That this little. No, it doesn't. Okay. I got to I got to do some drawing here. So we're mixing lenses and what we were doing earlier. Yeah, sure. Like what we were doing. Like the equation. Because you're like, the muscle, the muscle. We're going to do a muscle. We're going to change the focus. I'm still going to do a little bit of this stuff. Looking. So the muscle is going to work. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It also looks like the MIT system. Yeah. So correction is like when they ask you. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. Okay. So if you've ever liked, which I'm guessing you have, like looked at water, okay, in a glass. <laughs> yeah. okay, you look at water. In a glass, yeah. you've had like a fork or something inside of it, right? And no. it gets all and it gets all distorted. No. Or a finger or anything like not a finger, but hopefully it's the thing you want to I'm just saying. Okay. Could be a mafia thing, I don't know. But it but it gets distorted. So there's two situations where you, you, you can deal with this. And it all boils down to which direction that the light is going. Okay? So here's the deal. So let's say that you're on you're the human looking in, at the fish. Okay? So yeah, this is you. Okay. <laughs> this this is a big eye, small fish. This is angular like momentum thing. Okay. So what's going to happen is that if you pick any point on here, what's going to happen is this: as that light is traveling away from the fish, and this is the whole key. You have to understand which direction the light is going. So for you to see the fish inside the tank, which we just did, the photons had to hit the fish, they had to bounce off the fish. So 